وأنزل الله عليك الكتاب والحكمة وعلمك ما لم تكن تعلم وكان فضل الله عليك عظيما الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to be speaking about حق اللسان the rights of the of the tongue this organ the tongue is a very small uh, organ but the effects that it can have is very serious and in our religion in our deen the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam explained to us allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions it in the quran how serious the tongue is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he told us in, the, in a hadith that imam tirmidhi narrated in his jami' ahmad in his musnad abd ibn humayd and at tayyalasi and all of them they narrated this and Sheikh Muhammad Nasiruddin Al Albani rahimahullah he authenticated it in his Silsila Hadith Al Sahih and his Sahih Al Jami'ah. That the Messenger of Allah Alayhi Sallam he said, "Ida asbah al rajul, if a man wakes up in the morning, fa inna al lisana tu kafir al aaba." The uh, body speaks to the tongue, and it says to the tongue, "Ittaqillah fiina, fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala regarding our affairs." Fa in istaqamta. استقمنا وإن إعوججت إعوججنا فيل الله regarding us if you are upright and steadfast we are also upright and steadfast and if you deviate we also deviate with you so tongue please don't put us into destruction meaning everything that we tend to do or a lot of things that we tend to do it all starts with a word that we said right if a person is fighting with another person, it's like words that are being exchanged first, and then the wrist, and then the hand, and whatever comes after, right? If a man wants to go commit zina with a woman, it's his words that he exchanges with her, and then after that, it all follows through. So, so the word is a very powerful thing. Yani the tongue is a very powerful organ. And the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam, he said in another hadith, in rajula la yatakallamu bil kalima. A man would speak a speech, or he would say words. لا يلقي لها بالا. He doesn't give much consideration to what he just said. He doesn't really understand or doesn't really, he doesn't comprehend what he's just said. يهوي بها في نار جهنم. Because of those words that you uttered, you'd be put into the hellfire deep down. So it's, you met a brother, you said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, for example. You don't just realize what you've just said. Okay? There's ajar in what you've just said. Or you say something that's not good for another Muslim, but you don't really take into consideration what you just said. And then this has what? Uh, places you in hellfire. A poet, he said, احفظ لسانك أيها الإنسان لا يلدغنك إنه ثعبان كم في المقابر من قتيل لسانه كان تهاب لقاه شجعان He said, احفظ لسانك أيها الإنسان Oh, children of Adam, Protect your tongues. احفظ لسانك أيها الإنسان لا يلدغنك إنه ثعبان. Do not let it sting you. For verily it's a snake. The tongue. كم في المقابر. How many people ended up going to their graves because of words that they said? صح? They ended up being put in their graves because of words that they said. They died, they got killed, whatever. And that's what Allah tells us in the Quran. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ إِذْ يَتَلَقَّ الْمُتَلَقِّيَانِ عَنِ الْيَمِينِ وَعَنِ الشِّمَالِ قَعِيدٌ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ مَا يَلْفِظُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيمٌ عَتِيدٌ There is not a letter or word that you utter except it's written. It's either written as a good thing, mashallah, it's boosting your position, for it's putting you up. Or you are speaking and you're uttering words that are angering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now that's causing you to go to the hellfire. So the tongue is a what? Very serious thing. A man who divorces his wife is words that he says to her. Sah. 
If he does actions and he doesn't say anything, it's not divorce, is it? It's not. It's words he has to utter. It is through words that you get married to this woman. The tongue, if you sit down and you list everything it can do, subhanAllah, it's very powerful. It's a very powerful organ. Are we all together, brothers? وَلِذَلِكَ حَدِيثَ عَلِبَابُ الْتِرْمِذِي نَرَيْتِرِ نِزْ جَامِعَ مِنْ حَدِيثَ عُقْبَةَ مِنْ عَامِرٍ رضي الله تعالى عنه عُقْبَةَ مِنْ عَامِرٍ He asked the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم He said, Ya Rasool Allah, من نجاته A messenger of Allah, what is success? That's what we're looking for, right, in life. We want success. We want to make it. So he asked the Prophet, he said, Ya Rasool Allah, من نجاته What is success? The Prophet said to him, أمس عليك لسانك That's the first thing he mentioned to him. He said what? Protect your tongue. Control your tongue. أمسك عليك لسانك وليسعك بيتك وابكي على خطيئتك Control your tongue. Stay and stick to your house. When trials and tribulations come, stick to your house. سلامة الرجل في الفتنة أن يلزم بيته كما قال عليه صوت حديث الإمام الديل من ريتد شيخ محمد ناصر الدين الألباني رحمه الله authenticated it. Which is the times when there are fitan, stick to your house. وَلِيَسَعْكَ بَيْتُكَ And وَبْكِ عَلَى خَطِئَتِكَ And cry over the things that you have done wrong. Whenever you remember it, just let your eyes water for it. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, عَيْنَانِ لَا تَمَسُّهُمَ النَّارِ Two types of eyes, the hellfire will not, will not touch it. عَيْنٌ بَكَتْ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ An eye that cried for the sake of Allah. صح? And also from the hadith, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ The seven Allah is going to give a shade to the day when there is no shade is what? رَجُلٌ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَالِيًا فَفَاضَتْ عَيْنَاهُ A man or a woman who remembers Allah privately. مَنْ خَشِيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ Remembered Allah privately when there was nobody else, it affected them and they started to cry from it. So the success is those three. But what was the first one that the Prophet started with? أمسك عليك لسانك. Another wording of the hadith it says طوبى لمن ملك لسانه. Prosperity and good is for the one who controls his tongue. So the tongue, brothers, is a very powerful organ. So now that you've understood the weight and the heaviness and the importance of the tongue, I now want to go into inshallah taala some of the rights that it has in Allah al Karim. So inshallah taala, if you've got a book and pen. Uh, write it down. If you don't, get your phone out, inshallah ta'ala, on your notepad and write these rights, inshallah ta'ala, that the tongue has on you. And every time I go through a few rights, I'll ask you who remembers the first, who remembers the second, so that inshallah ta'ala, it doesn't just become a lecture where you listen. My aim and objective from these series that I've been doing up and down the country on the issue of the rights of the tongue, or the rights of the heart, or the rights of knowledge, or the rights of the scholars, or the rights of Allah, or even the rights of the Messenger والسلام, is that when you leave, you know exactly what the rights are. One, two, three, four, five. So that when you go home, you can start acting upon it, inshallah ta'ala. Our religion is a very practical deen, sah? So the first rights that the tongue has, inshallah ta'ala, is ayyumsikahu. The person, he stops it. Anil khawdi fil batil. Anil khawdi fil batil. That you protect from your tongue in indulging in falsehood. Control it. And that's what Allah mentioned in the Quran. When the people go to the hellfire, may Allah protect us all from the hellfire. It will be said to them, so here what they say is, when they asked, why did you come to Saqqara? Saqqara is not a good place. Saqqara is one of the names of, of one of the Jahannam, right? Why did you come to Saqqara? Why did you end up to, coming to Jahannam? Did you not know what it was like? What caused you guys to come here? This is the question they're going to be asked. And they say, قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ We never used to pray. وَلَمْ نَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ We never used to pay the zakat from our wealth. This is the part I want from the ayah. Which is that whenever people would speak and they would talk, we would indulge in those backbiting and those gossips and all of that. So these people are going to the hellfire for what reason? Because they did not control what? They did not control their tongue. They are now, they see somebody talking about somebody else, instead of saying, look, I have two options here. I either tell this person, look, اخي اتقي الله. 
fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a'rad al-Muslimin is haram. The honor of the Muslims is haram. Stop speaking about this person like this. Or he doesn't have control, but he gets up and he leaves. Yeah? What does he do? He gets up and he doesn't sit around and listen to somebody speak about somebody else. Those are the two options that you have. You can't sit in a place where munkar is happening and you're just listening or you're, in, you're, you're speaking about it yourself. That goes against uh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sanctioned. The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, one day it was mentioned to him a woman. And when it was mentioned to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, the thing that was mentioned about her was min kathrati salatiha, she used to pray a lot, this woman. Wa siyamiha, she used to fast a lot. But look at that. After the shahadatayn, the shahadatayn, after ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashadu anna muhammad al-rasulullah, what is the biggest pillar? It's the salah, right? She used to do the salah. She used to fast. Fasting here is that she used to do voluntary fasting. That's what she was known for. Okay? But this woman, the problem that she had is She used to harm the people with her tongue. She prayed. She fasted. But what was her problem? Her problem was that her tongue was... The hadith specifically mentioned she used to harm the people with her tongue. So it's not like physically harming the people. She'll just speak about them. She'll say bad things. The Messenger Ali all he said was, here fit not. Where is she? She's in the hellfire. She's a woman who hasn't controlled her tongue. She didn't follow the commandments of Allah in this matter. This woman is going to be, you know what? She's going to be in the hellfire. The second right, inshallah ta'ala, that the tongue has, inshallah ta'ala, is so who knows the first right that I mentioned first? What was the first right? So the first one was control your tongue from what? From indulging in falsehood. That can be so many different things, right? And it can be backbiting people, it can be gossiping, it can even be talking about the deen of Allah with no knowledge. So many different things it can enter. Are we all together? Good. Hey, what was the evidences that we mentioned for this? What are the evidences that we mentioned for this? Hey, who can provide us with one? Hey, barakallah. وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ What's the understanding in that? How did, we, how did we say that this shows that you shouldn't indulge in falsehood? How does this ayah show it? Yeah. How does this ayah show hey from Bal? And Saqara is what? Jahannam. So why did you guys end up in Jahannam? And they will say what? We used to speak about the people or we used to indulge in falsehood. Any other evidences that we brought that speaks about harming people with your tongue? Yeah, the, the woman the Enough. She will be in hellfire. And why would she be in hellfire for? Because that was the only thing Hafiz and Hajar said was mentioned from her bad things. Are we all together? The only thing that was mentioned that this woman did hear, we know, that was bad, that the hadith stated was what? Her tongue. So the ulama, they all mentioned this is the reason why she's going to go to hellfire. So you can pray, you can fast, you can be a righteous individual. And just because of your tongue, you can end up going to the hellfire. Lidalika even, before I move on to the second right, uh, the noble companion, Mu'adh ibn Jabalin, the Prophet, he asked the Prophet Sallallahu what did he say to the Prophet? He said, Dulluli ala abani yuqarribuni ila jannati wa yuba'iduni min al -nar. He said, Oh, Messenger of Allah, tell me an action things I can do that will bring me close to Allah and Jannah and it will distance me from the hellfire. The Prophet, he said to him, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَرَهُ اللَّهِ What you have asked about is what? It's something very, very heavy. But it's easy for whoever Allah makes it easy for. May Allah make righteous deeds and acts of worship easy for us. May Allah forgive us for our shortcomings and our errors. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he then stated a few things that Mu'adh can come with. And then the Prophet said after that, أَلَا أَدُلُّكَ 
Should I tell you something that will overcome all of that? And Mu'adh, hungry for knowledge, that's what the Sahabas were like. He said, Bala, Ya Rasulullah. Of course, O Messenger of Allah. Not yes, but of course. Please, please tell me, O Messenger of Allah. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he grabbed his tongue and he said, Kufa alika hadha. This organ. Be careful. Protect this organ. Refrain it from things. He then said to him, Awa inna la mu'akhaduna bima natakallamu bihi ya Rasulullah. O Messenger of Allah, are we going to be held account for what we say? Are we going to be punished and judged based on what we say? The Prophet said to him, Takilatka ummuka ya Mu'ad. May your mother lose you, Mu'aw Mu'ad. That was a phrase that the Arabs would use. Sah? So whenever the Prophet ﷺ would say these things, by the way, it's not that he is making dua against the person because Mu'ad, he's, at one point he's going to die, right? And also some scholars, they explain it to mean that whenever the Prophet made dua against any Muslim, that would turn into a dua. As the Prophet said in the hadith, alayhi salatu wasalam, فَمَنْ دَعُوتُ مِنْ أُمَّتِي Anyone I make dua against in my ummah, my dua for them is what? Against them is a dua for them, alayhi salatu wasalam. So the Prophet told him, كُفَّ عَلَيْكَ هَذَا This tongue protected him. And then the Prophet then said to him, when he said, he said, تَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ يَا مُعَذْ May your mother lose you. وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسُ فِي النَّاسُ وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسُ فِي النَّارِ عَلَى مَنَاخِرِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ عَلَى وُجُوهِمْ أَوْ مَنَاخِرِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ May your mother lose you, Mu'adh. What other reason do you think that the people go first, first, uh, face first into the hellfire? Only because of what their tongues have brought them forward, huh? What, what other reason do you think a person will be put into the hellfire with their face first in? Only because of what they said. So these ahadiths and these evidences all show the uh, seriousness of the, the tongue and how we should uh, protect it. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said a statement which some of the scholars, they said it might be the Prophet's statement, but يعني, marfu' but the truth of the matter is that it's not uh, authentic to make it marfu' like it is mawquf, the statement of Ibn Mas'ud. He said, Wallahi ma ala wajhil ard. There is nothing on the face of this earth that deserves ahwaja min sijni that deserves prison more than the tongue by imprisoning it with your teeth. The thing that deserves the any prison most is the tongue to protect it. Sahab brothers. The second right, inshaAllah ta'ala, uh, that the tongue has been in Lahil Kareem. is that the person, inshallah ta'ala, opens his tongue towards speaking good. So if you've protected it from evil and from speaking evil, the second right that he has on you is an yutliqa lisanahu, is that the person opens his tongue ala qawli al-khayr, words of good and speech which is khayr. And Allah mentioned that in the Qur'an, la khayra fi kathirin min najwakum, there's not many khayr in our private conversation إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ أَوْ مَعْرُوفٍ أَوْ إِصْلَاحٍ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ A lot of our discussions and our dialogues, Allah says there's not a lot of khair in it. And they are private conversations. إِلَّا مَنْ أَمَرَ بِصَدَقَةٍ Except the one person who commands people to do sadaqah أو معروف Or he commands people, encourages people to do good أو إصلاحٍ Or he tries to work towards bringing peace between the Muslims. He knows two Muslims are not on good terms. And he works towards what, brothers? To bring the Muslims together. Akhi, did you know what Fulan said about you in a good way? I heard it. He loves you. He appreciates you. He works towards bringing the Muslims together. Allah wa ta'ala mentions that there's, this is khair in it. Also, using your tongue to recite the Quran. And reading the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ أَوْثَقُ شَافِعٍ وَأَغْنَى غَنَائٍ وَاهِبًا مُتَفَضِّلًا وَخَيْرُ جَلِيسٍ لَا يُمَلُّ حَدِيثُهُ that the person sits down, especially at the time, وَهَذَا زَمَانُ صَبْرِ مَلَّكَ بِالَّتِي كَقَبْضٍ عَلَى جَمْرٍ فَتَنْجُوْ مِنَ الْبَلَى 
ولو أن عينا ساعدت لتوكفت سحائبها بالدمع ديما وهو الطلع الشاطر يسد. The person sits down and they focus on especially this time. وهذا زمان الصبر ملك بالتي. We live in this time when the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام told us زبل الفتنة يأتي على الناس زمان المتمسك بدين كالقابض على الجمرة. There's coming a time when a person who's holding on to on to his deen is like he's holding on to a hot charcoal. At this time, go back to the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and read it. Yeah, brothers. The book of Allah, the Quran is what you recite. Fill it with your tongue. That's the best dhikr that a person can read. Are we all together, brothers? The Quran, reciting it. Allah mentions in the Quran many places. وَرَتِّلِ الْقُرْآنَ تَرْتِيلَ Recite the Quran. Read the Quran. Allah says, أُتْلُ مَا أُحِيَ أُتْلُ مَا أُحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةِ That is, أُتْلُ مَا أُحِيَ إِلَيْكَ In Surah Kahf, Allah says, وَأَتْلُ مَا أُحِيَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ كِتَابِ رَبِّكَ لَا مُبَدِّلَ لِكَلِمَاتِهِ وَلَنْ تَجِدَ مِنْ دُونِهِ مُلْتَحَدًا إِنَّمَا أُمِرْتُ أَنْ أَعْبُدَ رَبَّ هَذِهِ ال... إنما أمرت أن أعبد رب هذه البلدة الذي حرمها وله كل شيء وأمرت أن أكون من المسلمين وأن أتلو القرآن يعني وأمرت أن أتلو القرآن I was, com- I was commanded to what? I was commanded to what? Read the Quran So Musa has to read the Quran and give time to the book of who? Allah subhanahu So your tongue reciting the book the Quran consistently, continuously, not stopping from, from reading it. So that is the best thing you can busy yourself. And that of course has a benefit for you. You'll find your heart, inshallah ta'ala, is going to find tranquility and ease by just sitting down and what? Reading the Quran. And we're living at this time, subhanAllah, that a lot of the practicing Muslims uh, or even brothers who are now seeking knowledge a kind of walking away from memorizing the Quran. I don't know this trend where you, you seek knowledge, but your relationship with the Quran is what? It's very, very little. Your, your relationship with the Quran is very little. Or you say, I don't need to memorize the Quran. Or I don't need to learn the Quran. Are we all together, brothers? And where, where do we take all these verses that's telling us to, to recite the Quran, right? Where do we take those verses? Those verses require us to put it somewhere. So we read the Qur'an. Who, will leave, who are we leaving the Qur'an for then if we don't recite it? صح? So the scholars, they, they discuss how much should a person read from the Qur'an. I believe a Muslim who wants, who loves the Qur'an, who يعني, believes the Imam today, what did he recite for us? أَسَى رَبُّكُمْ أَيَّ الْحَبَكُمْ وَإِنْ عُدْتُمْ عُدْنَا وَجْعَلْنَا جَهَنَّمَ لِلْكَافِرِينَ حَصِيرًا إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم ويبشر المؤمنين الذين يعملون الصالحات أن لهم أن لهم أجرا كبيرا وأن الذين لا يؤمنون بالآخرة اعتدنا لهم عذابا أليما إذا إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوى. So an ordinary Muslim who is just nine to five works. Some of the scholars, large quantity of aima, they mention he has to finish the Quran once a month. It's obligatory based on those ayat that we recited. Another amount of scholars they say, a student of knowledge, if he's not good and he's not doing good and he's seven days. Every seven days he should what? Finish the Quran. So he's uh, and he does it according to the way that the Sahabas used to do it. Sahabas used to do it every seven days. So they would take three surahs. Three surahs. There's difference of opinion on whether they would add Fatiha into those three surahs. So they would start from Baqarah, Ali Amran, Surah Tunisa, that's three. Some, some, some scholars they say Fatiha is also in there. So if it's Baqara, it's for Fatiha, Baqara, uh, and Ali Imran. If you, whether you add Fatiha to it or not, your Juz al Mufassal would become either Hujurat or Surah Tuqaf. And then the Juz al Mufassal would be on the seventh day, you start from Surah Al Hujurat based on whether you took Fatiha in or out, and Uqaf, whether you put Fatiha in or not. And then that's the last, on the seventh day, that's what you. Uh, that's what you would do. In our culture, in the Somali culture, they call it Jalad. Meaning that people come together and they finish the Qur'an every seven days. Even better than that, if you want to be consistent of bringing back the Qur'an fast and quick, is that the person starts from Surah Al-Baqarah. 
of Surah Al-Fatiha. And they take it to the ayah, Inna Masabilu, in Surah Al-Tawbah. That's tenjus. From Inna Masabilu to Fama Kana Jawaba Qawmi to Surah Al-Nam. That's another tenjus. And then Fama Kana Jawaba Qawmi to Surah Al-Das. That's another tenjus. Every three days a person finishes the Quran. Every juice will take you 25 minutes, 30 minutes max. So how many hours are you going to sit every day if you do 10 juice? 45 hours, taqriban, give or take. Sahih brothers. Can you not, so 24 hours, can you not give Allah 5 hours? Yeah? Of course the qira is going to be hadar. Of course, it's, and you're going to go according to that speed. And then you're going to finish in 4 to 5 hours. It doesn't all have to be one, one sit. You can separate that. Five hours in the whole day. Does that make sense, brothers? If you do that for five years, every three days you finish the Qur'an, your hifz of the Qur'an will be what? It'll be very solid. Very, very what? Strong. And then the tongue, if you don't busy it with khair, it will busy you with what? Shar. Are we all together? Another thing that you busy yourself with is, brothers, when you're driving and you're on the road, and you're driving. What do you do with your tongue? You do dhikr. لا يزال لسانك رطبا من ذكر الله. Do not let your tongue dry from the remembrance of Allah. So you're driving a car. What are you doing in this car? Either read Quran to revise the Quran, or say لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير. صح? Is that so easy, right? Oh, سبحان سبحان الله والحمد سبحان الله العظيم. Are we all together, brothers? Your scale is heavy. You're waiting. For someone, uh, or you're at the bus stop, or you're on a train, or you're waiting for your friend in front of his house, for him to come out. Why is your tongue not moving? Do dhikr. So busy it with khair, inshallah ta'ala, or else it's going to busy you with what? With a lot of sharr. And that's what the Prophet sallallahu he taught the uh, companions. For the kuruni al kurkum. al jazaa min jinsin amal. If you remember Allah in that place where you're just parked, waiting for your friend to come out of his house, Allah is going to remember you. And the place Allah remembers you is better than the place you're, you're remembering Him. Are we all together, brothers? So it's very easy. Ya ladina amanu dhkurullah dhikran kathira wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. I used to see my mashayikh. Subhanallah. A lot. They would do the adhkar. So much. They would, every minute they're just doing dhikr, dhikr, dhikr. They're sitting with you, but guess what? You're in the same place, in the same gathering, but he's just growing. And floating high. And you're just sitting there, just probably, because uh, the Prophet did say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, There is not a group of people who sit in a gathering and they do not remember Allah in that gathering except that they regret it the day of judgment. So, they will feel like regret, like, why did I not do it? So, you're going to regret it the day of judgment that you sat that place and you didn't remember Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. لذلك الإمام البخاري رحمه الله إن الصحيح he concluded in his صحيح with which حديث حديث that talks about يعني first حديث is حديث يعني إنما العمل بالنيات بخاري narrated from his teacher الحميدي عبد الله بن الزبير and then the last حديث is what كلمتان ثقيلتان في الميزان خفيفتان على اللسان حبيبتان إلى الرحمن Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. Oh, kama qala alayhi salatu wasalam. Two words that are very light on the tongue, heavy on the scale. Beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. Walidhalika, even when we're in our households, there's so much adhkar that we can do. The Prophet told us alayhi salatu wasalam that anybody who is in his house and he says when he leaves his house, Bismillahi, لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله. It will be said to him, هديت وكفيت ووقيت. Imagine that. If he leaves the house and he says بسم الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله, you will be said to that person, you are guided. You will be guided. You will be what? Sufficed, and you will be protected. لهم معقبات من بين يديه ومن خلفه يحفظونه من أمر الله. Protected from all directions. Why? Because he said that. He leaves the house and he says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adhilla, aw udhalla, aw azilla, aw uzalla, aw ajhala, aw yujhala alayya. Are we all together? He makes that dua. When he leaves the house, is he going to oppress somebody? No, because he made the dua for it. 
He seeks refuge in Allah from oppressing someone and somebody oppressing him. Are we all together, brothers? That's why there's these people, when you're with all the time, they never get in problems. Their life is so smooth. You ask them and they tell you, I, yeah, I just make my dua when I leave. We're all together, brothers. When they leave the house. The Prophet told us, alayhi look how powerful the tongue is and the dhikr it can do. The Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, that a man, before he, have, he has intimacy with his spouse, if he says, Allahumma jannibna shaytan, wa jannib shaytan ma razaqtana. Oh Allah, protect shaytan from us and protect shaytan from our progeny, our children. The Prophet told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, that shaytan will not touch that child. You'll be protected. Your children will be protected for you. You won't have children that are on the street selling, Allah will protect your children. The Prophet is saying this to us, alayhi salatu wasalam. Are we all together, brothers? So within the household, there's so much adhkar that we can do that we actually are not doing. Are we all together? Somebody sends a long message and says, I'm possessed. Okay? The reason it has happened to you is because these things that Allah placed and the messenger placed has not been taken, right? What was the person meant to say? When they enter the toilet, Bismillah, Allah inni a'udhu bika min al khubithi well, khabaif. This is the dua that you make when you go to the toilet. When you come out, you say, Ghufranik. Are we all together, brothers? And in these duas that you make, it's a form of protection for you. And your tongue is busy with dhikr. And guess what? You don't have time to talk about people's honor and who they are and what they're up to. Because your tongue is busy with the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Are we all together? And Al-Imam Ibn Al-Qayyim, and his kitab Al-Wabil Al-Sayyib, which some people think is the Sharah of Kitab Kalim al by Ibn Taymiyyah, but it's actually not. Okay, it's a separate book. Ibn al Qayyim mentions in there taqreeban 70 to nearly 100 benefits of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 70 taqreeban. Okay, benefits of just sitting and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you get. Are we all together? So the right of the tongue are the, those two brothers. You protect it and you withhold it from evil and anything that's bad. And once you've stopped it and you've prevented it, and that always takes precedence over bringing good. Always remember, الوقايتو خير من العلاج. Prevention is always better than cure, brother. صح? You protect yourself from things first and then you think about bringing good. Are we all together, brothers? Parents sometimes say, I want to give tarbiyah to my child, I want to nurture my children accordingly. I say, first of all, take everything that can harm your child, that's first. If you just do that alone, your child might grow up very good. Even if you don't bring any good to the child. Why? Because of the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, مَا مِنْ إِلَّا وَهُوَ وَهُوَ يُولَدُ عَلَى الْفِطْرَةِ فَأَبَوَاهُ يُهَوِّدَانِهِ أَوْ يُنَصِّرَانِهِ أَوْ يُمَجِّسَانِهِ The fitrah, if you leave the person upon the fitrah, and you don't taint that, the fitr is already good. Are we all together, brothers? Bringing the good is a step, it's the next, it's the second step. Where now, I've prevented all these bad gadgets, these folds, this nonsense from you. I'm now introducing to you uh, the good that you need to know. Are we all together, brothers? So, we're living at a time, subhanAllah, when speaking about people's honor and their rights, it's very bad. And also people are causing, just because of their tongues, they're causing khilaf and disputes and disagreements and between Muslims. The Prophet Sallallahu one day he walked by a grave and he said, Innahuma la The people, the, the two people, the, he went by two graves and he said, Innahuma la yu'adhabani. Both of them are going to be punished. And they're not being punished for something very big, meaning it was something they could have avoided. It was something they could have avoided. The hadith says, as for one of them, as for one of them, he used to walk around the people and cause يعني, fitna between the people. Would go and say something, you know what Fulan said about you and Fulan said about you. That's what the first one would do. Are we all together, brothers? And because of that, what did he gain? What happened to him? Adab al Qabr. He got what? Adab al Qabr. 
Imagine if the namima, this adab al is talking about general namima. Imagine if the namima is between students of knowledge or ahlul ilmi scholars. What do you think? You're taking one news from one continent and you're taking it to another continent and you're causing two ulama, two people of knowledge, or you're causing two students of knowledge to go their separate ways. What would the punishment even be? Less. Because now what you've done is you separated a people who were together could have, mashallah, done so much. We're all together, brothers. So protect your tongues. As I said to you before, what the poet said, Protect your tongue. I read in the biography of Ata ibn Abi Rabah that they said, he said about himself, I never said a issue. I never spoke a matter and unless I thought of it 70 times. Is it for me or is it against me? This thing I want to say, is it for me or is it what? Or is it against me? If I realized it was for me, I would speak it. And if I didn't, I left it. Are we all together, brothers? Atab ibn Abi Rabah, who was a tabi'iyun jaleel, studied under Ibn Abbas and he was, he sat in the seat of Ibn Abbas in the haram when Ibn Abbas passed away. Atab radiyallahu rahimahullahu ta'ala, that's what he used to say. Even one time, they entered upon, oh, either Sa'id ibn Jubair or Atab, one of the two, they entered onto Ibn Abbas and he was holding his tongue. And then he said to him, Mahlan, Ibn Abbas, eat, be gentle to yourself. And then he said that, Huwa alladhi awradani al-mawarid. It is my tongue that has thrown me into what he's thrown me into. We all together. Qul khayran tagnam, aw uskut an su'in taslam. Say good, you will find success, inshaAllah ta'ala. Or be silent, you will find safety. Is there any, anything else? Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir, fal yaqul khayran, aw li You have no other choice. Either say good, or be quiet. You'll be safe. How many times have you regretted in your life you said something and you're like, I wish I never said that? Yeah? So, especially to your wife, huh? It's recorded 10 years later, still that conversation is reminded, sir. So, like, oh, I, I apologize, I shouldn't have said it. So, anything you say or speak will be recorded. So, you regret it. It's a word that you could have watched before you said it. Are we all together, brothers? And I always saw that if a person walked into a room and they sat down and they didn't say a word and they got up and they left, everybody would want to know what this person's thinking. So, the minute you talk, everyone's evaluating your brain. And your tongue, it scoops from your brain and it puts it towards the people. Now everybody's judging, are you smart when you talk or are you not? You either impress or you don't. But if you're silent, you're always safe. Are we all together, brothers? You're always what? You're always safe. So there is nothing better than what? Silence in a lot of situations. A sukut is what? Salama. So your tongues, nowadays like him, some people don't talk a lot. When you sit with them for hours, they don't talk to you. But on social media, they're what? There's something else. With their fingers, they say a lot. And that takes everything we were speaking about. The same ruling as what we were talking about. Are we all together, brothers? When a person's with you, he's very gentle and soft. And then on social media, he's a what? He's a different person. Because he's got a name that no one knows, or he doesn't, no one knows him. But in real life, because he's known, he keeps himself, he behaves himself. So, like in who knows what you're saying and what you're speaking? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers, I advise you all and me, let's protect our tongues. Let's ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, any mistakes or shortcomings that we came in, uh, we came with in our lives. We have the opportunity now 
Wallah. Or the day of judgment, it's not going to be uh, dinar or dirham. Anyone whose wealth that you've taken or anything you've taken, it's maybe a pound, two pounds, 300, 400, 1,000, 10,000. It's now you can pay back all people's rights. Or you've spoken ill about somebody. It's today you can clear from that person their rights and ask them for forgiveness. Are we all together? Just the other day, a young 13-year-old brother came up to me. He said, I used to warn against you. Not that I, I, I don't mind if he does. It's always forg anyone's forgiven who says anything about me. I've forgiven every Muslim so Allah can forgive me for my shortcomings. So I never take anything personal. I mean, it hurts. It always hurts when people say bad things about you. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ Lakin, I like to forgive people because I know I need forgiveness for who? For Allah. So a Muslim doesn't have to tell me to forgive them. I've already done that in advance. But it was amazing that he came and he, 13 year old, and he said, I, I want your forgiveness for what I said about you. I said, you don't have to. I'm irrelevant in this whole, whole issue. I'm in, I'm irrelevant. Inshallah, I forgive you just, just so you feel better. But even if you didn't, I, Inshallah, I'd, I'd forgive you anyways. But it's good on his side to think that way, sah? Because there are some people who won't forgive you. That there's no other way with them except what? التحلل من المظالم that you clear from them. So you contact that person, you say, أخي, I want you to forgive me. And I, I ask Allah wa ta'ala to forgive you as well. Are we all together? Ibn Uthaymin does say, like in one of the Kitab al Tawbah, the he does mention that if you said something about the person and you think that the person is not gonna, it's gonna be bad, you said something bad and they're gonna wanna know what it is and all of that, and it's gonna make matters worse. He did say, Rahimahullah, that you could mention good about him all the time that you remember him in every gathering and every opportunity and uh, beg Allah wa ta'ala to forgive you because this is going to create a what? A worse a situation. But generally speaking, just ask people for forgiveness if you've said about things about them. Are we all together, brothers? And uh, the gossiping concept through watching uh, uh, TV and shows and these things, it's all based on like the concept of gossiping. That's what we're taught, sah. Everyone's gossiping about this person. There's even magazines that are called gossips on celebrities, sah. So the women are sitting there gossiping about this and that. All of this is going to be accountability the day of judgment. Allahumma gfil lana dhunubana wa israfana fi amrina. وثبت قدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم اغفر لنا هزلنا وجدنا وخطأنا وعمدنا وكل ذلك عندنا يا رب العالمين اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك فينا ولا يرحمنا رب آت نفوسنا تقواها وزكيها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقناع عذاب النار Brothers, I wanted to say I love you all for the sake of Allah. May Allah bless and reward the organizers, the uh, committee uh, of this masjid for allowing me to uh, share some benefits with you. Uh, I know, I'm sure, I can see Sheikh Muhammad Hudayfa here and I can see other brothers, inshallah, who are more qualified uh, to speak uh, than I. But Jazakumullah khairan for thinking good of me and allowing me to uh, share some benefits with you all. And uh, if I've said anything that's offended anybody, I also ask for forgiveness uh, on that. Um, before I go, I just want to know who can remember what I said in the lecture. So I'm going to ask questions, inshallah. I'm going to divide the room into three. So there's the right, there's the middle, and there's the people on the left, inshallah ta'ala. And also... If you're on the left, inshallah, bin ila yawm al-qiyamah, may Allah make you min ashab al yameen The people on the right, inshallah. So here on the right, what was uh, the, one of the things I mentioned for the importance of the tongue? So I mentioned the importance of the tongue, and how important the tongue is. Can you mention one point here? Uh, 
So holding the tongue, controlling the tongue is a is is, a, is success. Good. Another point, inshallah ta'ala that I, the, the, the body follows the tongue. So the, a lot of actions start with the tongue and then the body follows. So if it's a bad action from the tongue, the body can often follow into that that's the only thing. Sahih. That the body follows the what? The tongue. So the tongue is a qa it's the what? It's the uh, leader and the body follows through, hey? Okay, also the body took to the tongue and it says for Allah regarding our affairs. Any other point? I think that's roughly what we said at the beginning. Hey, the people in the middle here, inshallah, can you mention the first rights that we said that the tongue has? Since it's that important, what is the rights that the tongue has? Hey, I'm going to choose inshallah. Yeah, you, yeah. Now you're looking back. You, inshallah. What is the first right? <coughs> protect your tongue from bad things. To protect your tongue from bad things. Very good. What are the things that are bad that you should protect your tongue from? Still in the middle. Hey, my young brother. Yeah, no. What are some bad things that you should protect your tongue from? Don't look back, don't look back. Huh. So what are the things which are bad that you should protect your tongue from? Hmm? Backbiting, good. So backbiting is a very bad thing that you should protect your tongue from. What's another bad thing that you should protect your tongue from? Uh, talking about Allah which you have no knowledge of. Yeah. Speaking about Allah is religion with what? With no? With what? With no? قُلْ إِنَّمَا حَرَّمَ رَبِّيَ الْفَوَاحِشَ مَا ظَهَرَ مِنْهَا وَمَا بَطَنَ وَالْإِثْمَ وَالْبَغْيَ بِغَيْرِ الْحَقِّ وَأَنْ تُشْرِكُوا بِاللَّهِ مَا لَمْ يُنَزِّلْ بِهِ سُلْطَانًا وَأَنْ تَقُولُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Speak about Allah's religion with what? Sahib al-Maraqi, he says, وَالْكُلُّ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْمَنَاحِ الْأَرْبَعَ يَقُولُ لَا أَدْرِي فَكُنْ مُتَّبِعًا If you follow the four imams, what do they all do? They all say, لا أدري. I don't know, I don't know. They avoid what? Answering questions. Sah, brothers. So we're saying that, hey, on the left, inshallah ta'ala, what was the second rights that I mentioned for the tongue that we should do, we should do for the tongue? Huh? Yeah? Yeah, so to utilize your tongue in that which is good. So can somebody tell me from the left, what is the good things that you should do for your tongue? Ha, huh, Habibi. Yeah? The remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do you do adhkar? We mentioned some adhkar that you should do. Hey, what else? Reciting the Quran very frequently and often. What did we say the best amount of Quran a person should read? The best? To finish it in three days. Who knows how we laid it out? We broke it down for you to finish it in three days. Hey, Ibrahim? I can't hear you properly. The first ten Jews up to in the Masjid, correct? And then the second uh, from in the Masjid up to where? No, no, what to Jadilu? From my kind of Jawab Qom. What to Jadilu? Is which surah? An Kabut, sah. And what surah do we say? From my kind of Jawab Qom. Surah what? Surah Al Naml. Are we all together? If you make it, what to Jadilu? How many is it going to be now? You've moved how many? One extra Jews, right? Huh? Nine, sahih. So you've made it 11 from the top. If you go down, you've made it 11. We're meant to make it how many? 10. So it's up to from Akana Jawab al And then from Akana Jawab up to where? Up to Surah Al Nas. Those are the 10. 10, 10, 10. Are we all together? Hey, yeah. Ooh. What about if you do it in seven days? How do you do it in seven days? Yeah? Three Surahs. So you go on an odd number. So you go three, five, seven, nine, and eleven. And then thirteen. Once you reach thirteen, it either stops at al hujurat or it stops at what? Uqaf. Based on whether you took Fatiha or not. Sah? And this is now called the Juz ul Mufassal, meaning any Muslim. Who does not, is not able to memorize the Quran, at least memorize the Juz al Mufassal up to Surah Al Qaf. 
because the bulk of the Prophet's Salah was revolving around this, this from Qaf to Nas. Are we all together? If you can't remember the entire Quran, majority of the Prophet's Salah was what? Qaf to, to Nas. So a person should at least memorize that amount. And a lot of the meanings of the Quran, a lot of it is in from Qaf to what? Are we all together, brothers? And then if, you can't, if, if the person can't even do seven days, what we did we say is the must a person should do is what? Huh? 30 days. And how many, where is that? 30 days, you finish the entire Quran. Every day you're going to do what? You're only going to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 20 minutes every day. Is that good? Yeah? There was a sheikh... Um, his son finishes the Quran. His son finished the Quran every seven days. So he, the, the sheikh, he flew back to his father. His, his father was a big sheikh of the Quran. So he said to his son, "My son, how is your relationship with the Quran, my son?" He said, "Dad, my relationship is good." I said, "What do you do? How, how often do you finish the Quran?" He said, "I finish it every seven days." He thought his father was going to be so happy. He said, "My son, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولُ يَا رَبِّ إِنَّكُمْ اتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورًا." You boycotted the Quran, my son. What's happened? He said, oh, Dad, I read it. I finish it every seven days. He said, every seven days. Look, look at how they look at it and look at the way we look at it. He goes, every ayah, you, you see it after seven days. Every ayah, you don't see it for seven days. And we all together, our brothers. Like you, this ayah is only going to come back to you after another seven days. Like... Another seven days, ah. That verse, you've abandoned it. It should be coming back very frequently. You should be seeing it very frequently. So three days is ideal. So you see this verse, three days later you'll see it again. Are we all together, brothers? So imagine those people who, who've never finished the Quran in their life or who've even done more than one month, sah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of the, of the Quran. And may Allah revive the Quran in our hearts. إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه بارك الله فيكم وجزاكم الله خيرا anything I've said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and His Messenger are both free from it سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك